The value chain was introduced by Michael S. Porter in 1985 in the book Competitive Advantage. Value chain is used to analyze the flow of value-adding activities from the raw material supplier to the end customer. The model looks at what value the company adds to each link and thereby uncovers the company's competitiveness. The value chain consists of nine value activities that together create added value and thereby the company's margin. Margin, in many places also called profit, is actually the value chain's tenth field. Here there is no activity. The field size is dependent on the previous nine fields. The profit is equal to the difference between the value chain's total value, which is the value of the product to the customer, that is the price he is willing to pay for the product, and the total cost of producing the product, which is the total of the costs that are in the value chain's nine activities. The nine activities are divided into two categories. The first is primary activities. These activities include the main activities. All five activities are directly involved in the production and selling of the actual product. The second category is support activities. They go across the major activities and aim to coordinate their functions as best as possible with each other. The primary activities consist of the five activities at the bottom of the model. These are inbound logistics, operations, outbound logistics, marketing and sales, and service. Each of these activities may be described as follows. Inbound logistics can consist of receiving goods, inspection, storage, receiving returned goods, etc. Operations include activities associated with transforming raw materials and components into new products. Outbound logistics are activities associated with order processing, packaging, shipping, everything which deals with the distribution of the finished product to buyers. Marketing and sales are activities associated with providing the customer with information about the product's excellence, which should lead to a sale. Marketing and sales are involved in determining the product's distribution channel, pricing, promotion, personal selling, etc. Service Activities which ensure that the purchased product enhances or preserves value for the customer. The service could include advice, in person or online, repairs, customer training, ongoing maintenance, and so on. These were the five primary activities. We shall now review support activities. Support activities consist of four activities, and they are in the upper part of the model. They consist of procurement, technology development, human resource management, and firm infrastructure. Each of these activities may be described as follows. Support activities, procurement, are activities that refer to the function of purchasing, not the physical input. Procurement supports all the primary activities. It may include the establishment of procurement routines for the purchase of raw materials for inbound logistics. In addition, there must also be negotiations about purchasing of energy and service to the machines in operations. Buying new cars for delivery of goods as part of outbound logistics. 
there must be a procedure within marketing and sales for the purchase of advertising materials. New cars for service technicians represent service in the model. Effective procurement routines can greatly influence purchase costs and thereby contribute to higher profits. The support activity technology development must be understood broadly. It is the overall systems that provide an overview of the entire organisation. The sales department have the opportunity to see whether the products the customer demand are out of stock, how far they are advanced in production, and when they can be accurately delivered. It may involve ERP, Enterprise Resource Planning, systems that bind the entire organization's information together. Support activity Human Resources Management includes recruitment, training, retention, motivation of the firm's staff. Many times it is the HR's department's responsibility that the right skills are available at the right time in various departments. A simple example is that before marketing and sales contact the first potential customer in Japan, HR department helps with hiring a person who understands the Japanese language and their culture. Support activity firm infrastructure is a kind of superstructure or umbrella which covers all the other activities. It supports both the primary activities and support activities. It includes the organization of the company, management, planning, quality management, finance, etc. Now we shall consider how you can use the model in practice. If the manufacturer of a product is going to make a profit and survive, the total value of the product for the customer has to be greater than the cost of creating the product. Therefore, you should regularly review the nine activities and analyse if the individual activities carried out provide more value to the customer than the costs they accumulate. If you find areas or points where you cannot answer yes, then you should modify or discontinue these activities. You thereby continuously improve your company's competitiveness. Now we shall review an example of the use of the value chain with a manufacturer of blades for wind turbines. For simplicity, we will first review the primary activities. A manufacturer receives inbound logistics raw materials to be included in the blade later. The raw materials shall hereafter be part of the primary activity operations in which the blade will be produced. When the finished turbine blade is transported by truck, it is part of the primary activity outbound logistics. It is probably due to quality, durability, etc. that we have convinced the buyer about the value of our blades. This is part of the primary activity, marketing and sales. The maintenance of the blade is part of the primary activity, service. Support activities support the primary activities throughout the process. Support activity procurement has probably been helpful in preparing contracts for the purchase of raw materials in primary activity inbound logistics. Agreement with the trucking company on transportation of the blade in primary activity outbound logistics, as well as established procedures for purchase of flights and hotels to maintenance staff in primary activity service.
Support activity technology development has probably been helpful by calculating the need for raw materials in the blade in operations. Plans for when the individual blades are delivered in outbound logistics and when the surface has to be maintained in service, technology development supports them. Support activity human resources have hopefully had a share in all other activities placed below them. A simple example would be the blades that are delivered offshore. Here they must make sure that the people have the right training in relation to the rules of working at sea. Support activity firm infrastructure is, as said before, an umbrella over all other activities. It supports the other eight activities. If the blade manufacturer is to remain in the market, all nine activities must be analysed on an ongoing basis. It must be determined whether the activities provide more value to the customer than it costs to implement them. Customers' priorities may well change over time. There may be new technologies which increase productivity in the chain. Therefore, there should be continuous evaluation which should seek to make improvements in all activities. Finally, let us consider a critique of the model. The model was created on the basis of the 1980s major American companies that produced to stock. Today, many large companies are manufacturing to order. It may be better, therefore, to place the primary activity, marketing and sales, further ahead in the chain. Many companies will only start production when the goods have been sold in advance. Based on this knowledge, the model's linear structure seems very rigid. The model has a built-in tendency to place the company in a defensive position at the expense of the company's creativity and readiness for change. They are always looking for small improvements in relation to the existing product, a form of incremental innovation. The model does not include the option to switch to something else. It is very static. The good thing about the model is that it continuously forces you to look for improvements that provide greater value to your customer.